Hello. Hello, hello. It is such a beautiful day. We are having a very hello. intimate hello. day hello. here in my home. Um, this morning, my husband asked me for coaching. I'm not going to lie. I love it when he asks me for coaching. Um, he doesn't say like, hey, babe, can you coach me? He says, can I run, can I run something by you? And like, he'll be like, or, or I'll be like, what do you think about this? Which means, can you coach me? <laughs> I think <laughs> that's the lens that I see it through. And so this is perfect, actually, starting this morning. Um, anyways, good morning. Welcome to the Smart Woman Group, the Smart Woman Community. If you're just joining us here, um, oh my gosh, I'm starting to sound like a radio show host. I used to run it. I used to have, I used to own a media production company um, when I was 26. And I had that like radio announcer voice. That's another live. Uh, maybe I'll share, share that story with you. I taught myself how to be a news anchor and I created like this whole, um, this whole um, online business and more TV brand. It was amazing. Um, but anyhow, um, th this morning, I want to talk to you about lenses. And I think this will support you being around the Christmas dinner table this year. Um, hopefully you're having Christmas with your families. I don't get to have Christmas with, with my whole family this year. I do get to have Christmas with my dad, which is special. And of course, my kids and my husband. Um, but I, I want to deliver this message this morning because this is number one. This came up for Phil. And I know what's coming up in my life is probably coming up in your life. And then I was thinking, oh, I bet you this will really serve them being around people of different opinion this Christmas. And this happens, right? I just did a whole two day workshop on learning how to style flex and how to be an extraordinary coach. And I'm doing it again in the new year. So if you don't want to miss that, make sure um, put put something in the comment section so we can make sure that you're connected to that. If you, if you want to make sure that you're on that workshop, it was phenomenal, but really teach you guys how to lean in to people who you necessarily wouldn't be able to communicate with and, and how to communicate with people who are different than you and who have different opinions than you. And the day to the days that we live in now, people just have different opinions um, to vax or not to vax. Um, who to vote for, who not to vote for, um, if your kids should be in school, if they shouldn't be in school. Um, just, just like everybody has an opinion. And what I love and most people aren't loving is that people are really taking a stand for what they believe in, which is actually really great. <laughs> it doesn't feel great all the time, but it is. It's great that people are like, no, this is what I believe because there's nothing more, more powerful than knowing what you know and believing what you believe. There just really isn't. So um, I wanted to share this with you this morning because something that was coming up for my husband while he was sharing his, essentially what he was sharing was his insecurities, his self-doubt, his limiting beliefs with me. I asked him, I said, is it possible that there's another interpretation of what you're experiencing? And he stopped for a minute and he was like, yeah, of course. Of course it's possible. I'm like, okay, great. So what's another interpretation of what you're experiencing? And we dove in and I won't share all the details of that conversation, but I just want you to pause for a minute and notice what it is that you're making up about something. Now, a lot of you, just because I'm intimate in, in this community, a lot of you are making up stories as to why you can't hit that next level in your business. OK, and so as your coach, it's my job to see it through a different lens. Right. Because I'm not I'm not going to be enrolled in why you can't. I'm not going to be enrolled in why you don't feel worthy or why you um, why you don't feel equipped or qualified to go to that next level. That's not my job as your coach. My job as your coach is to show you through a different lens what's possible and to enroll you in that possibility of your vision actually not being what you see it to be. And so I just want you to pause for a minute and to notice the stories that you're making up around your next levels. Okay. So you're like, wait a minute. I thought this was about the Christmas dinner table. It is. Okay. So because those limiting beliefs that you have around your next level personally are also trickling in because how we do one thing is how we do all things in some capacity. Okay. Is also how you are taking a stand in your relationships. So maybe just maybe there's going to be 
a conversation over the dinner table or in a a family gathering this Christmas that is not going to land for you. And you're going to see it through a completely different lens. And you are going to maybe feel a little triggered inside or maybe a lot triggered. Now, here we go again, right? And so I want you to play a little game with me this Christmas. When you find yourself in this moment of like, ugh, right? And, and that's the same feeling that you feel when you're coming up against your next level, by the way. When you're, it was a lot of my clients yesterday on the PPI call, they're coming up against this like, ugh, I, I gotta do, I gotta do a call. I gotta host an event. I, I, I'm enrolling three clients by the end of the year, right? They're, they're setting these new levels, these new goals, and they come up with those, it's like, oh, but how? Right? Oh, but how, okay? So that could happen this Christmas season around the Christmas dinner table. That could happen where you're in this conversation, in this dialogue, and you're like, oh, I'm going to go on this person. <laughs> okay. So I want you to just notice that moment. Notice that moment. Notice that moment of, uh, and pause. What is possible? I want you to write that question down and live by it and insert it every single time you feel that jerking knee jerk reaction inside of you that that ugh, that or some of you some of you may have a tendency to like go ah, at someone or some of you may want to retreat retreating doesn't work either you have a very powerful voice inside of you you have a stand inside of you that is yours it is, it is your stand. It is your belief system. So stand on it, but don't retreat. Don't retract. Don't go into your little ball because you don't want to be um, seen or heard. Okay. So there's, there's all these different reactions that people have, but the reason why I'm sharing this with you is because I want you to start asking that question. Okay. What is possible here in this moment? Now this will require a lot of discipline. This will require you to pause, to notice, okay, there's my reaction. I feel like I want to retreat or there's my reaction. I feel like I want to explode, (laughs) okay? Or there's my reaction. I feel like I want a nervous laugh or there's my reaction. I feel paralyzed, whatever, whatever's coming up for you, that uncomfortable reaction to someone else, pause, notice what else is possible here, okay? And then ask that question out loud. Ask that question out loud. Get curious. That's one of the greatest things that's missing in this life. We're taking things too seriously, really, especially as women. You know, like we get these expectations of how things need to look and sound and be and what people need to do. And it's like, okay, what if we didn't take things so seriously? What if we just got curious about what was happening, which would create a really neutral space, by the way? And we're like, okay, what's possible? And we say to the person on the other side, okay, they're like, Okay, great. Got it. Got it. What else is possible? So that's a little gem that I'm giving you. It's a powerful little thing that you can keep in your pocket to be in expansion mode with your families this year, because somebody brought it to my attention. I forgot about this. Can't remember who it was. It was someone in the smart woman group. They said it is separation season right now. This is where things get really tight and tense inside of homes, inside of relationships, Um, and not just within marriages, but also within families. And we know this, right? You're taking all these dynamics, you're taking the entire year, you're taking plus COVID, plus the government, plus everything that's been going on, plus inflation, plus no jobs, plus can't find workers, plus, 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 plus. And we're scooping it all up and we're putting it at one Christmas dinner table. (laughs) right? And so be that conduit for what's possible. Okay. Be the conduit for possibility because when you're in possibility, you're expanding. Okay. Because sitting at the dinner table and being enrolled in John and Susan's story about what's not possible and how the world is just bad, 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 bad. But what's going on is really, really, really bad. It's bad, folks. It's bad. Okay. Being enrolled in that conversation is contraction. And every single one of you is smart. And so you're generous. Okay. So you, so we serve, we serve, we serve, and we do the uncomfortable thing. We be the uncomfortable thing in the room. And sometimes shifting people out of what's not possible and into possibility is the cure for love. It's, it's well, the, love is the cure, but the, but the cure, but the cure is the shift. 
Shifting people out of what's not possible and into possibility can shift an entire dynamic immediately. Okay, got it. So I'm hearing what I'm hearing you say is what's not possible, what's not working, what is working, what is possible, what opportunities have been created. Because you're either being enrolled in what's not possible or you're being enrolled in what is possible. So I really hope this supports you today because I know that we can justify being in a story around what's not possible because it feels very real to us. But when you have the wherewithal and the conscious mind to say, pause, I'm going to remove myself from my emotional body. I'm going to remove remove myself from my physical body because we're not our emotions. We are not our body. We're not. We're not. And we can remove ourselves in an instant and we can just come outside of our body and say, okay, got it. What's not working here? What is possible in this moment? And what's possible is always vision. God gave us this really cool ability. And it talks about it all the time in the Bible. Actually, Des brought it up. It was brought up again at a, at a leadership meeting I was at last night. Um, how God actually in, in Habakkuk, Habakkuk 2.2, it talks about how God says, write it down and put it on a tablet so like, like essentially what he's saying is create a vision board and then give it to me and I will make it happen. So if you can see it, it will happen. That's how cool God is. And I love, I love all these like spiritual people who thought they came up with the secret. <laughs> They're like, oh my gosh, this secret. It's like, it's not a secret. It's in the Bible, actually. <laughs> That's never been a secret. Like it's read Habakkuk. I think I'm saying that right. It's not a secret. God created the universe. Yes, the universe delivers, but God created the universe, right? And so, yes, the universe has powers, but it's up to us to visualize them. So just know that no matter what you're speaking into this Christmas, you're creating something. So you're either going to be in contraction mode, which we talked about last, I think it was at the Be an Extraordinary Coach. I actually talk about this a lot inside my communities. You're either in contraction or expansion. Okay, so if you are in contraction, you're talking about how bad the world is, how things aren't working, what's not working, you're dragging up things from the past, you're sitting at the table angry at somebody, you're, you're not being forgiving. Okay, this forgiveness thing is coming up. We were, we were stretched into writing a, a letter um, to forgive somebody. And I'm like, I don't really have anyone to forgive. Like I feel really clean, but I do, I do have somebody who I get to forgive. And, um, it's actually just feels really yucky and painful. I was abused sexually by my cousin when I was little. And, you know, like when I look back on it, I have, it's just the most disgusting memory. It's just, it just, everything inside of me shrivels up. Like it just makes me want to puke every time I talk about it, think about it. So writing this letter, makes me want to vomit. It's just, it's just gross. And there's another side of me, the trained side of me, the powerful side of me that knows that he was probably abused as well. And while this is no excuse, I can have compassion for his life because um, not that it's a comparison comparison game, but he definitely had it way worse off than I did. Um, I had parents who loved me and um, who were there for me for the most part. Um, And he just didn't. And so I share this with you because it's important that you know I'm in this with you and that I'm not just this talking head on the other side of the screen that has perfect makeup all the time and that um, doesn't, doesn't go through the things that you're going through. Like my intention is to be in this with you. I'm a couple steps ahead in building out my coaching business and um, my personal development, possibly. I don't know. I don't know where you're at in your personal development, but my, my intention is to really just show you that this is so tangible because it's easy to look at my life and think, well, that was easy for her. I've gone through the same kind of stuff that you've gone through. Maybe not exactly, um, but I've gone through the same stuff you've gone through. And so this forgiveness thing is also hard for me. It's, it's also hard for me. And not because I don't want to forgive. I just like, it actually doesn't, 
it doesn't seem to even like fit inside of my body to write a letter to this person. And not that we have to send it. We're not being stretched into sending the letter. I just don't even want to go back into that memory. You know what I mean? Just don't even want to honor that time. And so by virtue of the fact that I'm having this reaction inside of my body, it tells me that I really need to lean into it. And I get to request support around how to do that. And so I'm going to do that. So that was not my intention bringing this up today. (laughs) My intention in, in this live is to just have you, or my intention was to give you this little nugget to support you this this Christmas and not just around the Christmas dinner table, but also in your business, in your coaching business. If there's any piece of you that wants to start being more active inside this community and coming to my free trainings, I have three free trainings in January. Be an Extraordinary Coach will be at the beginning. Then I'm going to be running a hundred to thousand dollar client challenge. And I'm also going to be hosting another vision to business. I'm also at the end of February hosting a live event in Florida. And it is going to be, I haven't, I think it's going to be called Illumination. I haven't quite figured out the marketing, but this is just kind of like a um, pre-invite kind of market on your calendars. If you want to get into community with me, if you want to come into my world, if you want to come and hang out and go on my yacht and be in relationship with me and this community, now's your chance to start planning for that. We're about 10 weeks out before that event. And it's the 25th, 26th, and 27th of February. Put it on your calendar. Maybe put it on your vision board. You know, put the event on your vision board because maybe you're like, I don't know how I would make that happen. You get to be there. You get to be there. There'll be a free component. The training will all be free. There'll also be a VIP component. There'll also be a client component. I haven't quite mapped out all the details, but I just want you to start planning for it. I want you to, and the reason why I'm sharing it with you now is because plant the seed. And every time we plant the seed, we're speaking into what's possible. Is it possible that you could be here in February with me? Yes. It's possible. Will things need to fall into place? Yes. Will you need to be in committed action around making that happen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you will. And it's possible. So be in possibility. That's the message for today. Okay. I love you. Create something extra ordinary today, whether it's a little bit of extra love for yourself. Maybe you need to have a bath. I had a bath the other night and I just said, I said to to my husband, I said, I'm going to have a bath. He's like, okay. I'm like, wow, that was easy. I had a bath. No one bothered me. I just sat in the bath and in my head, I was making it hard. I was making this bath impossible. So notice what you're making impossible to serve this this thing inside of you. Like for me, it was like, I was, I was needing this. I was, what I was doing is I was serving myself in, in uh, feeling bad for myself, essentially. That's what I was doing. I was feeling bad for myself. I'm like, I just want to have a bath. I'm like, I'm going to have a bath. He's like, okay, great. <laughs> like, so dramatic, right? And that's contraction. That's not possible. That's not being a leader. That's not standing in what's possible. That's not standing in your greatness. That's not standing in who you want to be this time next year. Who are you going to be this time next year? Stay in this community and you will rise to extraordinary heights. I see it all the time. Okay. I love you. Create something extraordinary today. Thanks for being here with me. I still haven't figured out my phone, so I can't see your comments but I do love you and I see you and I always look for your comments afterwards. So if something landed for you today, I'd love to hear it. And I'd love it if you would tag someone in this live as well. Okay. Bye. I love you.